Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. Last time, we took a look at how to do some mods on your Mockingboard V1A board to correct a couple issues. This time, we're actually going to look at how to fix the sound from the Apple II Logic board so it actually goes across both channels, but without muddying the sound between the two channels. So, let's get started. So if you recall in the last episode, we fixed the problem with the sound being blended across both channels by cutting the trace here between capacitors C2 and C3. And I contacted Tom Arnold about this, and he suggested what uh, you could do instead is actually replace these two capacitors with a combination capacitor and a 27 kilo ohm resistor in series, one for each channel. And so basically what you would be doing is you'd still have the sound getting split. So this would be the sound from the Apple II. It would get split across both channels, but with the extra resistor in there, it would prevent the sound from the rest of the circuit from leaking back through and mixing up between the two channels. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually replace these two capacitors with a capacitor resistor pair in series, one for each. And so the first step we need to do is just remove these capacitors. So to remove the capacitors, I'm going to try the same trick I did last time by basically just using a pair of calipers, attaching it to one of the capacitors, and then I'm just going to flip it over. And hopefully if I heat up the capacitor leads on the other side, the solder joints, with the weight of the calipers on the other side, it should just pop right out. So let's go ahead and fire up the soldering iron and see if we can just work these capacitors loose. Okay, so here's the capacitor. So one of them has fallen out, uh, just like extracting a tooth. And so now we're gonna use the solder sucker to just remove all the excess solder from the through holes. Okay, the first thing we're going to try and do is breadboard it just to make sure that this actually does make a difference. So what we've got is we have the output from the Apple II logic board. So this is the sound coming from the Apple II. It goes through the resistor. This is a 10K resistor. And then it comes out and we're just running a lead over to our breadboard. This then goes through our two 0.1 microfarad capacitors and this is where we actually split the sound into the two separate channels. It goes through some 22 kilo ohm resistors and then I just have it coming back out on these leads back to where it would tie into the main board here and over here. So we're going to go ahead and carefully plug this into our Apple II and see what the sound sounds like and see if we can actually get a, still get a clear separation between the two channels but also hear the sound from the Apple II itself coming out of both speakers. Okay, so here's Will Harvey's music construction set and it may be a little difficult to tell from the video but there's still clear separation between the two channels. So the treble clef is on the left, the bass clef is on the right channel and so now let's switch over and make sure that the Apple II sound is still coming out of both speakers, which was our original goal. Okay, so now we're trying something that just uses the normal Apple II sound output, not the mocking board. So if we did things properly and the capacitors are correct, then this should get routed to both channels equally. And it sounds like it is. The volume is a little bit low, and that's probably because we had to put in those 22 kilo ohm resistors. I could probably play around with the resistance values to see if you can lower them a little bit to increase the volume, but yet still maintain the separation. But in general, this is good enough. 
So I think what we'll do now is just go ahead and build some resistor capacitor pairs in series and then just solder them onto the mocking board itself. All right, so here's the final product. So I've got the 0.1 microfarad capacitor coming up out of one hole. It gets soldered to the resistor and then back down through the other hole that was already there. Uh, so I ended up using 4.7 kilo ohm resistors because that actually provided enough resistance without decreasing the overall sound volume too much. So that was a good compromise between avoiding leakage between the channels and avoiding decreasing the sound from the Apple II too much. It's a little messy on top. I'm probably just going to cover this with some heat shrink tubing or something just to uh, make sure it stays safe. So now let's go ahead and we will test it out. Okay, so here's Pitfall 2 using the Mockingboard sound card and the channels are separated between left and right as well as having the sound from the original Apple II coming out of the uh, both channels of the Mockingboard. So it looks like the mod to make the sound work properly from the Apple II was a success. Uh, again, if you have a Mockingboard V1A and you'd like someone else to do the mod for you, Henry Corbis from Ultimate Micro has volunteered to fix any boards that are out there that have this issue. So if you want the uh, sound to be uh, correct between the two channels, just contact Henry Corbis and he'll be happy to fix your board for you. Uh, or if you want to just do it yourself, then go ahead and follow the instructions on this video and the previous video and you should be up and running with no problems. So thanks for watching.